Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends, get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. I welcome you to the Daily Devotional Guide of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. Today is Saturday, the eighth day of January, the year 2022. And it is the second Saturday in the new year. Our topic for our Daily Devotional Guide for today is titled, God wants us to live a life full of love. And our text is taken from the first epistle of John, chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we are grateful unto you. It is not by our power, it is not by our might, that we are able to make it up to this day, the eighth day in the new year. We want to thank you for your love, your magnanimity, the expression of your being and your personality upon our life that has kept us and sustained us to see the light of this new day. As we wake up, O oh Lord, to face the challenges of this second Saturday in the new year, we lean upon you that you will give us direction. Your word will give us impartation. You will take us through whatever the challenges there are that they may be. By the grace of God, you will turn them to become stepping stones so that by the close of today, we shall come back home with testimonies. Thank you because we know you are faithful and we know you will do everything that we have asked of you, even beyond that. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text is taken from the book of first john chapter 4 verses 7 to 21 and i want you to quickly turn to that portion of the bible as we read together to begin the new day and it says from the king james the new king james version beloved let us love one another for love is of god and everyone who loves is born of god and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any times. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected amongst us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so we are in this world. There is no fear in love, but for perfect love casts out fears, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment, we have from him that he who loves God must love his brother also. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. People of God, very interesting topic. What topic could be more timely than the one presented before us today? Setting the pace for the new year. The topic is love. That God wants us to live a life that is full of love. What is love? Love encompasses a range of strong and positive emotional and mental feelings expressed between people or amongst people. And we have different types of love. We have the love we call Eros love, which is the love of the body. Normally, it's a, a carnal love, so to say, because it's majorly based on sexual love. We have a love we call the filial love, which is an affectionate love. And this is normally a love that is seen among parents, among siblings, among people of the same group, among people of a company. It's called filial love. We have a love we call the storge. Storge is the love of a parent towards his own children. It can be very sacrificial most times. And most times, it's also very, very unconditional. Then we have the love we call the ludus. Ludus is what we call the playful love. We are many of our youths, and even the so-called married people have found themselves today. It's a, a, a seductive love, and uh, it involves illegal sex. And then we have the love we call the pragma love, which is a long-lasting love. Normally, this kind of love is seen among couples, people who are in legal relationship. We have what we call the filular love, which is love of the self, loving oneself more than loving any other thing else. Then finally, we have the love we call the agape love. The agape love is called the selfless love, and... This is where we want to base our short exhortation this morning, the agape love. Now, what is the agape love? Agape love is the selfless love. In other words, from the text we read, we saw God himself be, being described as love. They said God is love. And everything about God, his complete personality, Everything about God speaks about love. And that love is a sacrificial love. That love that made him to send his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for us. Very sacrificial in nature. That is the love we call the agape love. Now, it is important we understand the scenario here. Apostle John emphasized critically much emphasis on love, unlike Apostle Peter, unlike Apostle Paul, unlike even James and others. He centered squarely most of his uh, talk. We are on love. Now, one question you will want to ask, why was he described as an apostle of love? You will discover that John was a man who understood his personal working relationship with God. He understood where he was coming from. He understood the encounter he had had, he had had with the Lord. And that was why we saw John describing himself in the Gospel of uh, John, chapter 13, verse 23. John, writing his own gospel, that Gospel, described himself as John, the beloved. In other words, he has personalized this great quality of the personality of our master, Jesus Christ. He understood that everything within and outside God has to do with love. So he described himself as the beloved of the Lord. And when you look at verse 7, you look at the statement in verse 7. He said, beloved. In other words, you don't give what you don't have. He is the beloved of the Lord. And now he is now addressing the brethren, the beloved of the Lord. This is actually a message to those who are already in the cycle. 
It's not a message that was given to people that are outside. These are people called the beloved. The people who have had an encounter with the Lord. The people who have had one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Lord. And Paul, uh, 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 John is bringing out the clear picture to us this morning. That everything about God is love. In other words, if God says you are loved, then you cannot tell yourself you are hated. Because the opposite of love is hate. If God says you are the beloved, go into the new day as the beloved of the Lord. No matter the situation you must find yourself in, no matter how tempting, no matter how terrible the situation may be, no matter the caliber of people you may meet on your way today, who may not even want to love you, may not even want to see your face, what is uh, our Apostle Paul, our Apostle John telling us this morning? He said you are the beloved of the Lord. So having had that understanding, it is important that we also know that we have our personal relationship with the master. He understood Jesus, and that was what set the tune, the direction for his ministry. People of God, it's important we understand this morning and in the new year that we have a master who loves us. We have a God who has shared the most essential thing for us in order to buy and to win our salvation unto him. We must understand that God knows everything about the new year. And so he is setting the pace and he's saying, you have to show love. You have to show love. And like I said at the beginning, we are not talking about the other loves I've mentioned, which I know many people may be so much interested in. We are interested in the agape love. The sacrificial love, the divine love. This is the love that comes truly from God. Now, it's important that God gave up his only son. The book of uh, John chapter 3 verse 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Now, what is the implication of that? The implication of that love is that we see love working out the salvation of man. In other words, if God is saying, my brother, my sister, today the eighth day in the new year, that he wants us to live a life that is full of love. God is saying, simply saying, everywhere you go today and even in the new year, look for a way to impact the lives of people for their salvation. There are many people who are dying. There are many evil being committed as a result of people who have not yet come to the knowledge of Christ. If only that love, like, I, like it's, we must mention here, love is a driving force. When you don't have Christ in you, that driving force will not be found in you. That's why I said it is from what you have that you can give. John had this embodiment of love because he has been described as the beloved of the Lord, and because he understood his working relationship with God, who created him and who called him to the service. And this is one thing you must realize this morning, that you have been called by the Lord. You have been called to this great service and ministry, to love one another. So we saw it here that it's important that as we go about our daily activities today, there are people you need to preach the word of God to. That love, that driving force, must propel you to reach out to the lives of people. There are many evil being committed in our society today. Terrible things are happening. Man in humanity to man. We have come to the height of, of, of evil in our country today. People are just dying like ants and nobody is bothered. People are not safe. But one thing is important. Your heart of love can change somebody's life. Your heart of love, your gift of love can change somebody's mind can make a sinner to repent, can make somebody who has been demonic, somebody who has been devilish, to accept Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. And you know what means? When that one happens, I want to let you know, we will be building a better society for ourselves. John also knew that Jesus' love for the Father motivated him to do all that he did and all that he said. And by the grace of God, John, decided to personalize this. He saw it as something for him, which means it is something you must have to claim this morning. I want you to know, don't say somebody hates you. My father hates me. 
my mother hates me. You see, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. You, your thinking must change today. God said you are the beloved of the Lord. You have loved. It doesn't matter what your husband said, what your wife said, what your children have said, what your parents have said about you. God wants you to go forth into this new day with the mentality of a loved one. And he said, from the love that you already have, with the Holy Spirit has put inside of you, Romans 5.5 5 said so, for the love of God has been poured afresh, abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. See, it's not something you live by your power. It's something you live by the enablement of the Holy Spirit. So we can see here John demonstrating this here. And then we also see that God's love, he loves us infinitely beyond what we can understand. And that his children are called to love him and then to love one another. You see, it's important we must understand this here. John is reminding all believers in Christ that we are to serve as a conduit upon which the love of God will flow out to other people. Let me tell you, if somebody had not shown you this agape love, you would not have been in Christ today. But for the fact that somebody reached out this hand of love to you, and you are what you are today because of the love of God that abounds, you have a responsibility, you have a duty to reach out to somebody who needs that love. And people of God, it's important. John's understanding of the mechanism of divine love made people to describe him as the expert of love. John was being described as the apostle of love. While Paul was being described as the apostle of faith, James was being described as the apostle of work, Peter was being described as the apostle of hope, John was being described as the apostle of love. Today, the world is desperately in need of love. And this is the defining attribute of the Christian life. With the exception of the word life, love is the most important abstract term in the Bible. God loves the basis for his dealing. That's God's love. His basis for his dealing with the human being, even in the Old Testament, which has now climaxed or has now translated into the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ through his death and through his manifestation to us in on earth. It is the key word in the Christian summary of biblical revelation. As we can see in Matthew 22, verse 7, John 3, verse 16. Love is the first attribute of the fruit of the Holy Spirit because that is the most vivid expression of the character of Christ. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 2, If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have no love. Paul summarizes it as, I am nothing. So you can imagine, when you go out this day, and you don't have love in your heart, the summary of it is that you are nothing. And I know you are not nothing. By the grace of God, you will not be nothing. You are somebody. You are something great. And that is what, why God is already setting the pace, setting the standard for you. Because God wants to bless you in a very special way. From the passage on discussion, the following factors are very evident. Number one, our salvation and calling as Christians is based on the principle of love. Love is the defining factor in our call as believers. It was love that brought salvation to the world. 1 John 4 verse 7. And it says, everyone, every, uh, everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. John 3, 16, which I quoted, also say, God so loved the world. So you can see the place of love. What it has played in our Christian life, in our Christian history. And that is the more reason today God is calling on you. God is calling on me. This same love that we have, that we have received free of charge, God is saying, take it out to somebody close to you. Somebody need this love. This is what somebody has been waiting for, to change the entirety of his life. But if you withhold it to yourself, I want to let you know you will not have done much today. Number two, our true identity as disciples of Christ is based on the principle of love. John 30, 35 says, By this, 
will all men know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So you can imagine, true love is an identity of the fact that we are the disciples of Christ. So in other words, if you don't love, you are not a disciple of Christ. Every man who hates his brother is a disciple of Satan. And you want to live your life today and say, God, may I never be a disciple of Satan. When you hate your brother, you are a disciple of Satan. When you hate your sister, you are a disciple of Satan. When you hate humanity, even amongst us in the church, we pretend most times, so much pretense every, everywhere and there. But God is saying today, a true disciple must be known as our identity as a people who have true love for one another. Number three, true love is sacrificial and is based on three sacrificial responsibilities. First Corinthians 13, 4 to 13, which is very important. I want us to quickly go there for this reference. It's very, very important. And we have one or two things to learn there. And what is he saying? I, I, dis, I divide it into three. And I say here, one, we have what we call the personal responsibility. We have what we call the corporate or comprehensive responsibility. And then we have what I term the unconditional responsibility. Now, what are we talking about here? You have a personal responsibility to show love to members of your family. As a husband, you must love your wife, no matter the errors, no matter the shortcomings. As a wife, you must love your husband, no matter the errors, no matter the shortcoming. I want to let you know, if you don't forgive your husband, you don't forgive your wife for the error of yesterday, then it means you are a man still living in the past. And God is telling you, I am taking you, it is a new year, it's a new beginning, it's a new realm, there is a new horizon, there is a new height, there is a new level, God is taking you higher, but you cannot be deterred because of not letting go with what happened yesterday. That is your personal responsibility, whether you like it or not. You must love your children. No matter how well what they are, all you owe them is to pray for them and to see that by the grace of God, they are all able to make heaven. Then you must love your family members. You have that responsibility. You have that duty. Then I call the other one the corporate or comprehensive responsibility. We in the church, how are we concerned? What is our commitment to people's welfare? Have we realized that most times the people we worship together, some of them don't even have a meal to eat a day? Have you, have you, have you realized that amongst our people in the congregation, there are those who don't have job? Where you have directors, managing directors, chief executive officers in the same church where you worship. When you have opportunity to give appointment, what do you do? You sell it out to make money. You are selling the life of your brother. Your brother who worship with you. You pray together. No wonder most days prayers are not answered the way they should be answered. Because each time you come out to pray, somebody is saying, God, why is it that he's the only one coming to share testimony? Where do I belong? That's why we must ensure there is a comprehensive responsibility to show love, even as a church. And as we begin to plan the budget for the year, which place do you place evangelism? And I laugh at some of the churches. They plump money into many aspects of the church, into building mansions, cathedrals, and different forms of auditorium. But they are forgotten. The life that we make eternity, that we not waste away on earth. All these things we are matting here on earth, they will, within, within the trick of an eye, they are going to go away. What is your budget like? As you plan your budget for the year, what are you budgeting for evangelism? What are you budgeting for welfare? What are you budgeting for uh, this uh, 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 program that churches normally to, to, to empower, empowerment of people? There are people, if they need little mobilization, it's enough for them to start up a business. I want to let you know, this is what will last forever. We are even eventually, when we make heaven, you come across that brother or sister, it will be happy for you. Not when eventually you make heaven and somebody will say, I don't even know why you are here. Because while we were together on earth, you never bothered about my well-being. There is the other one I call the unconditional responsibility. This unconditional responsibility is the responsibility God is giving us to love even those who hate us, to love our enemies. 
And we can see that one in the book of Luke chapter 6, verse 27 to 35. He said, love your enemies and do good to them that hate you. People of God, what prayers do you pray for your enemies today? Has it, has it not occurred to you? The more you pray for your enemies, the people you call your enemies, you see them the following day even looking headier. Can you, can you have, have you ever observed that? God is saying today, live a life that is full of love. Show somebody love. Reach out to people. There are people there who are waiting to receive that touch. There are people you can, you can systematically, voluntarily look for somebody to bless each day. So as you go out today, look for somebody to add values to his life. Look for somebody to put a smile on his face. This love of God that has been poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit is a, our motivating factor for existence here on earth. Love is the greatest. That's what God, God said. When the Pharisee, a lawyer came and said, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus told him, love the Lord your God first, then love your love for one another. Love your neighbor. So in other words, if you have no love, you have not fulfilled the great commandment. If you have no love, then you are not a true believer. So by the grace of God today, God is looking up to you. And I know you will not fail God. God, I will not fail you. That's one prayer we are going to pray. Baba, may I not fail you today. As I live my life, as I go about my daily activities, Holy Spirit divine, give me a heart of love. I will speak the language of love. I will look the look of love. I will behave the behavior of love. I will reach out and, and impart the lives of people with the love that can benefit them. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. We take this prayer here together and it says, Thank you, Lord, for your love for me. Despite everything I'm passing through now, help me, Holy Spirit, to live a life of love in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.